All right, everyone, welcome. Good morning uh, or good afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, it is Thursday, uh, November 12th, and um, and I'm gone today. So here is your uh, notes for the day. After you're done watching this video on the notes, um, I've got a video on Galileo Galilei, which has been posted to Schoology already. So when you're done watching this, then go watch that uh, that video on Galileo and the life of Galileo. Okay. Uh, so we're going to start here. Uh, we're in our astronomy notes. We're down at the very bottom. I've rearranged the slides a little bit just so that way I could put uh, a title slide on here. So um, it will look a little bit different. This astronomy page won't be there, but uh, we're taking astronomy notes. Okay. We've talked about uh, Copernicus and how Copernicus revolutionized uh, our thinking on on the universe. Right. He before Copernicus, uh, it was pretty much a standard belief that that the universe revolved around us, that the universe revolved around the Earth. Uh, Copernicus challenged that idea, and for the first time, that idea started to um, gain traction. And and it wasn't immediate, and it wasn't everyone, but it started to gain some, uh, some some more more and more people started to believe it. And not everyone, like I said, Tycho Brahe was one of those that didn't believe it. Uh, but Tycho Brahe, while he was very smart, he was coming to the wrong conclusion based on his own data. Kepler saw that Copernicus was right, saw that Copernicus was, was on the right path, and took Copernicus's ideas and improved them using Brahe's information, Brahe's data, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so Copernicus died, Brahe died, Kepler's there, Kepler's doing his thing. Um, this next person comes after Kepler's death. Kepler, Brahe, Copernicus, um, Ptolemy, these people never looked through a telescope because it hasn't been invented yet. It wasn't until this guy came around. This is Galileo Galilei. He came and invented a telescope. All right, so this guy uh, really modernized astronomy. It took astronomy into the modern era. But not only that, he he made some big discoveries using his telescope as well. Uh, here's a, I'm not sure if this is a recreation or if this is his original telescope, but this is what his telescope would have looked like. His telescope was 20 meters long, his first one. Now this would have been some other one, some fancier one. His first telescope was 20 meters long, and it was originally designed uh, as a weapon of war to let uh, the military look and see farther. Okay, but but once it was developed, he turned it to the skies. And he looked at Jupiter, and he saw that Jupiter had these weird things going around it. These, this is a copy of his actual notes. Um, and so you can see that sometimes there were two on one side, sometimes there were two on one side and one on the other. Sometimes there was three on one side. Sometimes there were four on one. Uh, where's it at? There's one on here where there's four all on one side. The point is, these things were going around Jupiter, and, and he couldn't figure out what they were. After studying them for a while, he realized that Jupiter has moons. That's a big deal because if Jupiter has moons, that is definite proof that not everything revolves around us. Before this, everything went around us because we were the center, the most important. But here, this takes away some of the importance of Earth as the center of the universe because here, these moons aren't orbiting Earth. These moons are orbiting Jupiter. That's a big deal, all right. Uh, and the he has named the four Galilean moons, and I should know this off the top of my head. There's Callisto and Io and Ganymede and Europa. I think are the four that he named. I could be wrong on that. I should definitely know that off the top of my head, but I don't. All right. So uh, he also looked at Venus and saw that Venus goes through phases just like our moon, and here is uh, the phases of the moon with the Earth at the center. With the Earth at the center, Venus would have to go in these epicycles a lot more often and not lining up with the times that it goes through its epicycles in order for Venus to go through the phases like it does. 
I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if you look at Venus in the night sky, even without a telescope, sometimes you can see the phases of Venus. It's pretty crazy. So this is really complicated. And he took Copernicus's idea and ran with it and found that it's much simpler. It makes much more sense for Venus to have these phases if it's orbiting the sun. All right, so here's a set of notes for, uh, this is what I want you to write down for Galileo Galilei, okay? Uh, again, you, I won't ever quiz you on the dates, but I do want you to know that, uh, to have it in your notes so you can have this working timeline. He made four important discoveries. The four satellites orbiting Jupiter. Ooh, I didn't talk about this one. He discovered that the planets are circular disks. They're not just blobs of light. Uh, he, by looking at uh, the planets, he was able to see the sunspots, or not sunspots, the, uh, the red spot and the stripes on Jupiter and the rings of Saturn. And he discovered that they're not just orbs of light, right? They're not just balls of light out there floating around. They are circular disks and they're very Earth-like. They have a surface. Okay, that's a big deal. Uh, he discovered that Venus goes through phases like the moon and the smallest uh, and is the smallest and the farthest from Earth at full phase. So uh, when it's at its full Venus, it is all the way across, farthest from us, which would make it smaller from our perspective. This uh, means that orbit uh, Venus must orbit the sun. Okay. Uh, he also discovered the moon. By looking at the moon, he discovered that there were cracks on the moon's surface and valleys and craters and hills and mountains and plains. The moon has topography. That's a pretty big deal because before this, they just assumed that it was smooth. All right, and then the last one. Uh, this one ultimately led to uh, some health issues. He used his telescope to look at the sun. And by watching the sun through his telescope, he was able to determine that the sun uh, rotated on its axis. He was able to see sunspots, you know, dark spots on the sun. We'll talk about sunspots later, but he was able to see these sunspots and uh, find out that the sun rotated on its axis. So, uh, you should pause it now if you're not if you don't have all this written down. And uh, once you have this written down, I'd like you to go watch that video on Schoology about Galileo. Uh, it goes into a lot of detail about his life, and, uh, and he's got a pretty unique and interesting life. So please go watch that. Take these notes. Make sure you have all of your homework turned in. You have no new homework today, and enjoy.